Hello and welcome to this brick wall graffiti tutorial. This is the final image that you will have by the end of the video. You can use the process in the video to add any artwork of your own or any artwork that you find on, and be able to put it onto a brick wall. I'm also releasing a level two where I take this a step further and make it so that there's some wear and tear on the artwork so it looks a little more realistic like it's been on this wall for a while. Um, I'm probably going to make a level three. I haven't decided exactly what I want to do for that yet. So if you have any ideas, feel free to leave me a comment and I will take those suggestions um, before making a level three video. All right, let's get started. Okay, I have Blender 2.8 open. I'm going to hit A to select everything, X for delete, and hit enter to actually delete. Real quick, let's go to edit preferences and input. If you have a number pad, um, ignore this, but if you don't have a number pad, just check that emulate numpad. And then also in the add-ons, I'm going to search for Node Wrangler and just make sure you have Node Wrangler um, on, okay? All right, so I'm gonna hold shift, hit A, hover over mesh and click on plane. I'm gonna hit R for rotate, X to do on the X axis and 90 to do it 90 degrees. I'm gonna hit enter. And then I'm gonna hit one. So if you have the emulate numpad on, you can just hit the number one. If you have a number pad, hit numpad one. I'm gonna tab into edit mode. I'm gonna hit G for move, Z to do it on the Z axis. And I'm gonna hold control to lock it on the grid. And I'm gonna left click with the baseline there. I'm just gonna tab out of edit mode. And the reason I did that is so when I scale it, I hit S, it's just gonna keep the baseline right there. So you could do just a real world measurement if you're trying to you know, replicate something in real life, but just to keep the tutorial simple, I'm just gonna hit S and make this bigger. That really won't matter for this tutorial. All right, so we have our wall. Let's go to shading. I'm gonna click on the shading tab at the top and it gives us this look dev. If you see this little uh, sphere, you're in look dev mode. If not, hit Z and click on look dev. So now I'm gonna hit new to get a new material. And let's go ahead and get the brick um, look going first. So I'm gonna hold shift, hit A, I'm gonna hit click on the search and type in image, hit enter. I'm gonna give myself some space and put it over here. I'm gonna le left click and drag the color to the normal. And I'm gonna hold shift, hit A, hit search and type in normal and go to normal map hovering over this line here left click and now we actually need to add the image texture so click on this open button navigate to wherever you put the project files go into the brick and get the nor normal and so now you can see we're getting this brick look and actually i want to change the color space to non-color and yeah, you can see we're getting this brick here. So I'm gonna, with my middle mouse, uh, shift and middle mouse lets you scroll around here. So I'm gonna scroll around, zoom out a little bit and left click on this image texture. And if you have Node Wrangler enabled like we did in the beginning, you can hold control and hit T. That's gonna add in the texture coordinate and the mapping coordinate nodes. And this will just allow us uh, to change the scale. So. You have scale value here. If I left click and drag my way down, I can have all three of those selected at the same time. And I'm gonna type in 1.5. And you know, really this value is whatever makes sense for your scene and it'll just dictate the um, scale of this brick. So I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hold shift and middle mouse with my mouse in the bottom section. And let's go ahead and add our graphic to the scene. So I'm gonna hold shift, hit A, click on search and type an image, enter. And oops, I'm gonna escape on that, I kinda lost where that was. So let me go ahead and add this image texture back in. I, want, I know I'm gonna need some space, so I'm gonna put it all the way over here uh, right off the bat. I'm gonna click on open and navigate to wherever you have the project files. And in my case, I'm using this ghost. Um, you can use your own artwork, just make sure that it has transparency, so it either should be a PSD file or a PNG or something like that. So now I'm going to take this color and drag it into the base color over here. And so the way this is going to work is wherever your image is, 
it'll it will be and as of right now where what's transparent is just straight black uh, in my case it doesn't look that bad but I know that's not uh, not gonna be what you'd like so let me hold shift hit a and click on this search and if you type in mix get the mix RGB I'm gonna left click on that hover over this line and left click again so uh, one thing we need to do though is we need to move this from color one to color two and we need to take the alpha and put it into the factor here. So now, wherever our image is, you see, but whatever is transparent is being, the color is coming from this box right here. So if you left click, for example, I can drag this down to a red, I can make it full brightness and kinda hide my ghost in the scene. Um, I could try to find some accenting color, I kinda think that clashes, but maybe like a, a really dark blue could work. Um, but yeah, you have the freedom to pick whatever color you like. I kind of like the black, so I'm gonna bring it down here. Um, real quickly though, let's uh, left click on this ghost here. I'm gonna hold Control T. And again, this will just let us change the scale because this is taking up the entire brick wall and you you know probably don't want that. So let me left click and drag on the scale. Oops, I kind of got the edge there. If you gotta do it in the middle, middle left click and drag down. I'm gonna go down to 1.5, I guess up 1.5. And it's repeating here and I don't want that. So right here it says repeat, you can click on that and do clip. So now we just need to move it in position and that's just a matter of playing with this mapping node until it's where you want. So I'm happy with it here. And so if I zoom in, you can see we have this nice effect going on. Um, but I also wanna show you in case you want it to not to be a like a painted brick wall and, and actually want to be you know, what a real brick wall looks like. So let's left click on this mix node. I'm gonna hit G and move it up. I just need some more space. So I'm gonna hold shift, hit A, click on search, type in image texture, and careful not to hover over any lines when you do this, put it into some empty space. So there we go. And I'm gonna click open. Again, navigate to where your textures are. In this case, we want the diffuse, D-I-F-F. -F. Click on that. And I'm gonna connect the color to color one. Now, right off the bat, this isn't quite right because like we did before, um, we need to change the scale of this texture. So what's making, here, let me zoom in on top so you can kind of see. So if I zoom in where this, uh, what is that called, the grout or whatever, doesn't match up with where the bump map is making it. So with my mouse back in the bottom, I'm gonna hit shift middle mouse. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna left click and drag G and move these out of the way. I wanna have the same mapping from my bump node for this diffuse wall node. So I'm gonna take the vector here and put it in the vector there. And so now it's all matching up properly. So I'm gonna zoom out and you can see our finished result here. So yeah, you can um, use this technique to put whatever you want on this wall as long as it has transparency. You can use it for animations, um, really whatever you want. Um, we'll take this a little bit further in other tutorials, but uh, we are done for this one.